Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebraic topology. Today, I would like to tell you a little bit about, in some sense, one of the most fascinating structures on cohomology, as a so-called cohomology ring, or as a ring structure on cohomology. And I will only do it intuitively, as I don't want to show you the uh, real definition, the honest definition, but kind of where it all comes from. Um, there will be an extra video for the real definition. So I would like to just count it a section. So it's a really classical idea, and I, cl I think it was the origin of um, the cohomology ring in the end, uh, which is then abstractly formulated. I will come back to that in a second. But the main idea is pretty old. Uh, it goes back to roughly uh, 1850, so 150 years ago, let's say, and it's a following idea. And people really did that without knowing what homology is. But anyway, um, so it's a following idea. So if you write down the homology of a reasonable space, let's say it's a torus here, this is of course my torus here, and you write it down, you get something like this. So in this case, h0 is z, h1 is z squared, and h2 is z again. And in good cases, which is almost everything you will ever write down in some sense, uh, the generators of the homology correspond to submanifolds, to submanifolds up to up to homotopy, so not contractible submanifolds. So uh, the one of dimension k, the k dimensional submanifolds correspond to generators of hk. So in my example up here, for example, um, I have h2 being z, and of course my two dimensional submanifold uh, is my torus itself, and I have h0 equals z, and my zero dimensional submanifold is any point, so kind of up to homotopy is any point. So let me choose this point here, this intersection point here, and you have two generators of H1, and these are the, the two fundamental circles, uh, A and B here, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the torus. So um, generators of the cohomology, of the homology, correspond to submanifolds of the corresponding dimension. And we kind of should be able to use this information to say more about X. That's kind of the first observation here, right? So um, Submanifolds, how submanifolds lie in your manifold, that should tell you a little bit more about the manifold itself. So you should be able to use this information in homology to say more about, and that's what you were up for in the end, more about the manifold uh, X, in this case, the manifold T. Yeah, the torus might not be super exciting, we kind of know, know everything about the torus anyway, but in general, you want to say something about a maybe complicated manifold X. Okay, and here's what you do you define a product which is dual to the one that you would see in the cohomology ring, and it's called the intersection product. And it's a very nice idea. It's a very, very nice idea. Ah, it's so beautiful, really beautiful. So, okay, so if you talk about submanifolds, and generically, a submanifold should intersect in submanifolds. Very nice idea, right? So, um, a submanifold of, uh, well, the problem is you need to go to co dimensions. So, a submanifold of co dimension n minus k. Let's say my dimension of my manifold is, is n, so this is n dimensional, and uh, something of n minus k generically intersects something of n minus l in co dimension n minus k minus l. Um, let me do this in an example here. So, my, so this is, of course, n equals 2, and I have my uh, one dimensional submanifold A and my one dimensional submanifold B, and of course, they intersect with the zero dimensional submanifold P. So, they intersect with a point. So this is kind of, kind of a general picture. We have now a huge dimensional space. We have some submanifolds in there, and generically they should intersect in smaller submanifolds. They might not intersect, of course. Um, the empty submanifold, by definition, is also submanifold. But anyway, so usually they will intersect in some nice uh, submanifold, and this defines you this intersection product. That, because if you think a little bit about it, well, you, this is certainly an associative operation. You get a you, 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 Intersect two submanifolds, you get a submanifold. You can intersect this with another submanifold, you get another submanifold. And this is associative in the usual way of associativity. Uh, so, this is actually a really nice uh, procedure. Um, turns out that this is almost commutative. Uh, and almost here is because, as usual in homology, you have some sign going on somewhere. So, actually, everything is kind of oriented, and you need to look at for oriented intersections. But let me ignore the sign for now. And let's just say this is also a commutative operation in the sense that, of course, if A intersect B is point P, for example, as in my example here, and B intersect A is then also point B. So this is an almost commutative operation um, up to the sign. This comes from the orientations. 
Anyway, so this is a very nice idea, right? You just take submanifolds in your uh, original manifold and you look how they intersect. And this defines you a product structure on, on this intersection of submanifolds or on those submanifolds. And since submanifolds correspond to elements in ho ho homology, um, you get a product structure on homology and it's called the intersection. Anyway, so here's another example. Uh, so this was the example from before. I slightly changed the picture to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. Um, so instead of taking the torus, I take the torus in this its usual incarnation as a square. And I still have my A that runs around uh, like this. It's really the same picture. It's my B that runs around like this and they intersect in a point. So A intersect B is actually P. And now again, this was uh, brackets indicate that I would like to be, see this as happening in the, com in the homology, right? So my product here says that A times B, if you want, is P. Um, and another example would be B times B is zero. Why is that? Well, because I want, I will make this a little bit more precise later, but I kind of want generic intersections and um, I just want, don't want B and B to run completely in parallel. So I would push B a little bit at epsilon bit away from B and then they don't intersect anymore. So this is zero. Yeah, whatever. This is kind of a little bit of a tricky point because you want to have those generic intersections. We'll make this precise in a, in a second. But anyway, this really gives um, in this case, our little torus, a nice ring structure, intersection ring. And this is how it looks like. It's a quotient of a polynomial ring, basically. Um, so it's a polynomial ring in two generators that don't commute, so A and B, and they almost commute, as I said, there's a stupid sign going on uh, anyway. So these are the relations. So A, B basically is B, A, so they basically commute up to the sign and they both square to zero. This is a ring structure on the homology of, of the torus, given this nice geometric interpretation by looking at how submanifolds intersect. Right? So this, I, I think this is pretty nice, and this was kind of a um, kind of well-known idea a long time ago, originates in, in algebraic geometry. And then you would come up with the following naive, but kind of good definition in some sense. Uh, so this is actually dual to the uh, cohomology ring, like cohomology and cohomology are dual, so this is kind of dual at least in good cases. And this is how it works. You define this intersection product, as I just said, by interpreting um, the generators of your homology as submanifolds, you intersect them, you take care of some orientation issues to get a sign correct, um, and then you get this um, intersection of the classes. It's a very nice formula, right? The intersection of the classes is a, a class of the intersections. Very nice formula. And it gives you the structure of this cohomology ring in huge quotation marks. So this is usually called the intersection ring. Um, as I said, this is dual to the homology ring. And of course, uh, the whole point is that the ring structure itself is um, is an invariant of your space. So kind of this knows more than just um, homology. It was, there's also this extra structure coming from how submanifolds intersect in your manifold instead of just looking at submanifolds, which would be homology. Um, turns out that's kind of what I'm just hiding here a little bit in this lecture or in this uh, video is this is not quite the correct definition. So problems are, for example, this doesn't really work for all spaces. It just works for all reasonable spaces. You can make that more general. Um, and it's kind of a non-intuitive multiplication direction. So it just kind of goes down, right? You dissect the one dimensional space and the one dimensional space and the zero dimensional space. This is not quite what you would do if you would think of this being polynomials, because then a polynomial of degree one times a polynomial of degree one should be a polynomial of degree two. It kind of has a non-intuitive uh, multiplication direction. And also you need to make this generically intersect precise, which is which is trickier than you would think it is actually in the end. But geometrically and just uh, as a good picture to have in mind, this is what the cohomology ring is. It's looking at intersections of submanifolds. So this generically intersect is usually called transverse intersections, linked to everything in the description. And you kind of want that same picture here, of course. So here's S2, and I have two submanifolds, a blue one and a red one. And you want to have good intersections and not bad ones. So you don't want something like, um, like this one here, where they run in parallel for a certain time, for a certain amount of time. And you can formulate this using uh, tangent bundles, which kind of already assumes that you have some nice analytic structure on, on your space anyway. So this is a bit tricky. It doesn't work for all spaces, 
but um, it actually is a nice picture to keep in mind. You want this generic intersections and you just formulate it by uh, this trans transversality condition. Okay, let me wrap up. Um, I haven't showed you quite what the co-homology ring is. I kind of showed you what the co-homology ring should be intuitively. This idea comes, beautiful idea coming from algebraic geometry that if you have a space and some structure, you have some vector spaces associated to your space and the elements in the vector space basically correspond to substructures of your original space. In my example, a manifold and sub-manifolds. And then you should intersect them. And if this class of substructures is, is good with respect to intersections, you get a natural uh, ring structure on your, um, in this case, homology of your space, which then tells you more information about the homology itself, which is, I think, a really beautiful and kind of very nice idea. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.